Hello and welcome back to the Giant Podcast with me, host Cameron Deacon. On the Giant Podcast, we talk all things Huddersfield Giants and rugby league. Today, we are joined once again by the match day announcer, Mr. Tim Burton. Hello. And we are joined by <laughs> Giants yeah. legend Earl Crabtree. Good to be back. And we are joined by uh, media manager, Mr. Connor Murphy. Hello. And we've also got a very special guest with us today, a man who works within the depths of the club, ever-present and a crucial part to the machine, who without the very day-to-day running of the club might just fall apart. It's equipment supervisor for the Giants, Mr. Andy Tulsha. Hello, everybody. Nice to be here. <laughs> it's good to have you, mate. Amongst, uh, so, amongst us friends. Is that what we call ourselves now? What was it? What was it? Equipment supervisor. Well, yeah. it, 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 so, kit man, no? Well, <laughs> it, well... You can say it like that, Earl, if you like. But, uh, that's that, obviously, that's, that sort of degrades you slightly, doesn't well, it? Well, it does, but when you're out, you see, and somebody asks you actually what you do, uh, and not like, what do you do? And I say, well, I'm the equipment supervisor. The, it's quite... Uh, the techno back, because they think it's quite an important role, but actually... I am just a kit man. I know what you mean. I once called myself uh, the match day ambiance executive. That is a good title. <laughs> yeah. That is a good title. Will I like convince? that. No. <laughs> <laughs> match day ambiance executive. I like that. That's really, that should be a title. I was in the Huddersfield <laughs> Examiner. Dennis Cool Commons once wrote, uh, wrote an article oh. about me and described me as the match day ambiance executive. Yeah. So you're to blame? I'm to blame. Yeah, good. Yes. So yeah, um, and back onto what you you do. What 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 actually is it? Because you say we say kit man, but what is it that you do behind the scenes in there? Uh, probably more what I don't do. To be perfectly honest, is, uh, is what you better. should you be doing? <laughs> well, I'm um, obviously clean the kit, wash the kit, set the kit up, uh, training facilities. I do all that. I set the pitch up for training. Uh, BBC basically. Uh, and that's not the media side of it, which Earl's obviously a little bit more savvy than me. BBC for me means uh, bibs, balls, cones, basically. Um, and that's uh, that's basically what I'm asked for near enough every day. Uh, occasionally they'll get the uh, they'll chuck the old tackle bag in. There's obviously uh, your walk bikes that need to take into training, poles. Um, you generally find, and uh, which Earl will know about this more than I will, uh, if he remembers him, well he will do, uh, Paul Anderson, mm. a great phrase from Paul Anderson was, I'd rather look at it than for it. <laughs> so basically, we used to take the kitchen sink with Paul. <laughs> but he were organised and that's what you've got to be really. Yeah. How, how long have you been doing that for then? Maybe? I've been here now, this will be my sixth, maybe seventh season I think. Right, okay, so you, you were around together a bit, you and Al. You were... oh, oh, yeah, yeah, for a number of years. Yeah. And, uh, definitely, yeah, definitely. He, he always looked after me, actually. And obviously, it's the little things like you say, um, Tully, obviously, with, uh, you know, sometimes like you find a stud missing in your boot. And yeah, as a player, you're panicking because like, you should have these things with you, but sometimes you mm. don't. Tully, literally, straight on hand, yeah, I've got that. And not only have they got like the little span, you've got all different shapes and sizes. It's got absolutely everything. It's like a TARDIS. Mm. It's his uh, <laughs> little cupboard that's got everything you could ever want, including our sweets as well. He's got the, the best array of sweets now, even. It's come with um, snakes, haven't you? Well, like, we, what's that all about? Where's that come from? Well, that's come from, obviously, with our um, Islander contingent. Uh, mm. And as, as I'm learning new phrases every year when you get new people coming along, particularly Australians, as sweets as we call them, which would be your jelly babies, which was your, your sugar intake, they now call them lollies. So the first time I was asked for lollies, I'm thinking, well, where are we going to get lollies from? <laughs> They'll be melted by the time I get them back. Exactly. So I went round and I said, what do you want? You know, 99s, funny faces. I'm thinking I need to go to Dixon's. Where am I going to keep these cool? And then I soon learned out that lollies meant sweets, basically. Right. But we've, you... we've changed now from, uh, as Earl will remember, the um, flowered jelly babies, yeah, if you remember. Right. We've now gone to mini jelly babies. We've gone to Love Hearts, and we've also gone to Strawberry Sweets, and more, the most popular at present now is the Snakes. Mm. Is this part of the uh, official rugby player uh, diet, though? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, why wouldn't they? Uh, Cameron, they're all bigger than me. If they say they want them, I have to get them. <laughs> Joking was... apart, though, um, you know, you, we, we've had a laugh about what you do, but your job's, your job's huge. You know, and like Cameron said, without without you, this this club wouldn't run. You know, it is more than bizballs, cones, training, sticking some sweets out. You have got a massive, massive job. You look after the kit for the academy. 
the under 19s and the scholars you also look after the first team kit you know you've got a lot to do you've got a lot to do so i mean talk us through a a daily a daily routine of of andy touch was kit man at the Giants. uh for what though for like match day or just for training in general match day be match day be good yeah. yeah uh match day i generally get here i try to get here maybe four hours before everybody else because there's always something that you're going to need to do mm. And you, you try not to forget everything. I tried to get the kit set up the day before and fold it away and put everything out. In it. Everybody sits in their own places. But since Simon's coming now, he's changed the dressing room around from out where people used to sit. We now go left edge, right edge, spine, and then we go out forwards then, which all sit together. So I've had to learn how to get them put in where they need to go. And as everybody knows recently... At the eleventh hour, <laughs> he's not in, he's in, and he's out, so he's coming in. So then you have to go and get everything out for somebody else and swap yeah. everything around. Uh, players now have all got different needs. They all like wearing the the true sock, so I have to get the cut off socks. I have to take them and get them cut um, and sewn up and tailored for them. Sui and Matagi in particular likes to wear an ankle sock, which is our sock cut down. And stitched up so it's like an ankle sock. As soon as Cruz Lehman saw those, I want some as well. <laughs> so Cruz has now got them, but Cruz will only wear those on warm days. If it's cold, it's true sock and full sock. So you've got all those little things. And so what you're saying is, is Cruz is a bit nesh? Yeah. Uh, no, no, Cruz is, um, shall we say, fashion conscious. Mm, yeah. Sky um, Sports Cruz, that's what we used to call yeah. him. Yeah. 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 But so it's not just about kids, it's about keeping players happy, isn't it? So there's a bit of player welfare in there, you know, you're getting these players out there, and you don't probably realise it, but you've got to keep these guys as happy as they need to be to go out there and perform. Oh. So it's more than just to, just to put some kit out for them. It's oh, of course it is, of course it is. And you know yourself, Earl, the last thing a player wants to be when he comes in and he sees his kit is to worry in where's where's my socks, where's my shorts. They've all got their own underwear which the uh, which they wear as well. So you've got to make sure that's there and that's put out for them. Right. Do you have to wash them? Uh, yeah, I do. Unfortunately, I have to wash them for them. Yeah, but it, 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 it all goes in. It all goes in together. So it's it's not too bad. So they're all they've all got their own little quirks of uh, of what of what they want. Uh, Suey so uh, always likes me to give him chewing gum before a game. Um. Certain people always want to tap you when they're going out. Uh, pe- people need a ball setting where they are. Certain people, as Earl, uh, luckily with Earl's contacts, got us some lovely sponsored towels mm-hmm, yeah. from uh, the Eye, fantastic company. Have they, have they all gone yet? Because they, they tend to get well oh. misplaced, shall we say, by some of the players, and they get the, the this amount of towels gets reduced week by week. Luckily, we've got plenty of them. Yeah. <laughs> so, if there's any players listening, can you just make sure you bring them back, please? Because we are running out again. Yeah, we are. So, uh, yeah, that, thanks, Phil. <laughs> so, listen to us. He's, big, he's bigger than them. But also, as well, uh, certain players will, will don't want a certain towel. They want a fluffy towel, <laughs> and um, <laughs> it's uh, it's. Uh, when we went to uh, France at the beginning of the year, I don't know if I should be saying this actually, but when we went to France at the beginning of the year and we stopped at a lovely hotel and uh, they supplied us with uh, some beautiful red and white striped towels. However, I don't know, but we ended up with a dozen of these towels <laughs> <laughs> back in Huddersfield. And as we're going through the baggage, I'm thinking, I'm sure this bag wasn't that heavy. <laughs> <laughs> The good thing is, though, obviously, you can, we're just borrowing them now because we can take them back next time, can't we? Absolutely. Of course we will be doing. Of course yeah, we will be doing. That's, do. that's what we'll be doing. You're also a bit of a counsellor to some of the lads, aren't you? You well, know, you, you, you're close in with what's happening and, you know, I've seen you sort of putting an arm around one or two of the lads sometimes and giving them a pat on the back or whatever. Well, you get... Um, when you work with them, you get... Um, they trust you. That's uh, that's a big it's a big thing is that and um, <clears throat> obviously I'm old enough to be the the dads. Um, well, I am. Well, I'm not the dads, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, so yeah, they just ask your advice, uh, and I can see when certain people are down, and you know who needs a cuddle, you know who needs a hug, you know who needs you know, it, it, a coach's job is to get the players. And the, and the coaching staff is to get the players fit and get them over the whitewash. Mm. You can make them as fit as possible, which they are. Mm. 
Mm. But you can't make them mentally happy yeah. and into where they've got to be. And everybody's carrying an issue. No matter what, however people look and think they've got a wonderful job and this and other. People have got little demons inside them everywhere. And it's getting to know people. Yeah. And if they and if they trust you, um, hopefully, which they do, you can sort of help them with that, can't you? Yeah. I was, I was going to say, it's like, um, it seems to me that you've got a very, very special relationship with those players. To have that in your head is like, this person needs this, this person, person needs that. And to have that ready on the go, it's you must feel very much part of that. With the, the squad, you know, even, <laughs> even though you're not out there on the pitch, you're getting them ready to go out there. It's, uh, yeah, you do. I, I don't sort of see myself as that, but, uh, but it, it, it's... Look, I've got a great job. I come to work every day and I meet... Thought you're my best friends every single day. Mm. That is a that's a fact, and we've got to smile. We've got to be happy. They put the hard yards into these boys, and you know the people think that they don't try. They do because I see them every week, and I know what yeah. they go through, and I know how tough and hard and physically yeah. it is with them. So they try every week. You know they do, and it, you just got to be there for them. And if if I can make match day for them that a little bit easier by making sure certain things are there for them. But, you know, more's the better. What, what was the reaction like after Sunday? What was it like in the dressing room after that game? Was there positivity in that they've taken them basically all the way to the end of the game, or was it very much sort of disappointment in that they knew they could have got something from there? Disappointment, definitely. Disappointment. And I, I, I really think we thought, well, we did, I don't think, I know, we thought we could do St Helens mm. without a shadow of a doubt. We, we were up for that game. We lost Jerry, unfortunately, at the eleventh hour. Mm. Um, but we've got the uh, we've got the Cray twins, haven't we? We've got Ron and Reggie playing <laughs> on the wings, so you know they come in. We're getting people back now, you know. But the the mood was positive, and we knew we could run them close, yeah. and we knew if we got to a certain point, we can beat these boys. Yeah. Unfortunately. When your luck's not with you, as it wasn't that day, and hasn't been for quite a bit of this season, the ball, the bounce of the ball, the kick of the ball, it went their way. Yeah, there was a change of mentality, wasn't it, going in, into that game? I think obviously because we were the so, huge yeah. underdogs, mm. everyone expected us to get thirty or forty points put past us, and I think that was quite, you know, acceptable, as in the sense that that is probably what should happen on paper. Mm. Yeah. But uh, any given Sunday is cliche. Yeah. Uh, these things do happen, and we'll talk about one of the other games at the weekend. Yeah, if yeah, that yeah. didn't inspire them, then nothing mm. would. But there were a definite change, and uh, there was a shift in mentality. I think Gaskell coming back as well. He adds so much of a threat he actually is the, probably the most creative player possibly the best player we've got at the moment because he causes a threat to the defence he makes them work a bit harder they have to scramble and we score points off the back of him so it's really good to see him back out there but what impressed me was the energy levels and you probably were seeing it totally as much as anything else and I don't know if that is something that was in training during the week so I don't spend that much time with them but going into this game they just seems well like you said just up for it, they look like they wanted it more. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt, and luckily we got to train on the uh, at the John Smith pitch as well, mm. which is a massive thing as well for you. Training on a, a surface like we did out there as well. Why is it so big for you? Why is why is it different from training where we do train on Leeds Road? Yeah, unfortunately, we, and, and and Earl as as long as Earl's been in, I have we've been nomadic in as mm. in as training. We train at Leeds Road. Uh, we train at the. YMCA at Laundell kind of let us go and train up there. It, it's difficult because we're here, there and everywhere, whereas other clubs will go to a training facility, step out of the door, straight onto a field and then come back into a gym where we're here, there and everywhere, unfortunately. Yeah. And I think you find consistency uh, builds... It, it generates a better feeling. And when you get a chance... To come down and, and, and go on a field like this, uh, what we've yeah, got, yeah. to train before the game, it, well, it makes it special. Well, Leeds Road is just a public field, isn't it? And we used to call it, well, dog dirt, we'll say, dog dirt park. <laughs> and there was a reason yeah. for that. You know, people literally, the dogs would be running around on it when we were training. Right. It was unbelievable. More like a Lynx golf course as well, especially when the, the uh, water comes down and sets in the corners or the uh, travellers are uh, actually staying on the pitch. <laughs> and that's not a lie, that happened. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. either flooded or there's um, travellers living on it. All these dogs flying around, 
pound on it, it's not the perfect place. So to go out here and be on the John Smiths is, is unbelievable. Because it actually, first of all, it makes you feel like yeah. you're actually, you, you know, you're, you're in the ground and on the pitch and um, preparing for a game mm. rather than playing on a public field. And I think it's a beautiful massive sunny day as well. Exactly, yeah. And, it's a beautiful uh, sunny day. I mean, people like Gaskell, don't it? Kick into corners and things like yeah. that. Actually, get your angles right. Yeah, where you're actually going to be doing it on game. Now. <laughs> exactly. You know, well, well, you're playing a game of inches, aren't you? And, and and the inches and the dimensions of the pitch can can play a massive part in it. If you get and if you become used to it, I mean, I, I know people people see the Gi- people see the Giants' first team play on the pitch, what 14, 15 times a year. But there's so much rugby played outside of that that they don't see, mm. and it can help you be more fluent. It can help you sort of move down the pitch better. You know, you, 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 when you're feeling the pitch more, you know, it can really be an advantage. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know whether the lads. Are, you probably tell me better than, than I would. Whether the lads felt that training on that pitch played a part in how well they played on Sunday, and also training on the pitch today as well improved how they play. But do you think that makes that much of a difference when it comes to game day? Oh, massively. Massively. If you're playing on a decent surface, you, as Earl's rightly said, your kicking's going to be better. You've got your dimensions right. You know exactly where you're going. I mean, as I say, I, I generally get to trade at Leeds Road <clears throat> probably an hour, 45 minutes before everybody else. And my first job is uh, to uh, park the van up and then I've uh, I've got to do uh, pool patrol, basically. <laughs> um, uh, which, uh, I, I mean, I've... I, I, I know a lot of kit men now in Super League and I've yet to ask, is that part of your remit? Uh, You're still putting cones over the um, bits of muck, we, we, which is used to happen before, so you go down and you think, wow, look at all these cones, we've got a right tough session. Nah, that's nothing to do with training, just lads. Stay away, just, just, stay away from those cones, boys. Those cones at all costs. Well, I mean, it's true, and he'll back me up with this one. I've been down some days, there's been that many cones down, I thought an helicopter were landing. <laughs> uh, and then it's not until I've gone and picked them up and thought, oh no, I know what it is. And, you know, we've got to also contend with the, uh, obviously, the amount of fast food that's down there. So the, the, the bins are emptied regularly by whoever, foxes, I presume, or uh, birds. I mean, I've picked up at least maybe 70, maybe 80 golf balls, uh, which I've been able to pick up off the field. And other interesting uh, items of clothing which uh, I'm sure some people are like, how can you go on without that um, there's been quite a few things it's a busy uh, night sorry <laughs> it's, there's been quite a few things that you pick up when you're down there but um, yeah it's a, it's a different thing going back to the uh, before we stray too far off course into dog muck and whatever we go uh, to the to the game on Sunday it's like what people's general thoughts on that game because I so at one point I really thought we were, it was going to happen I thought it was a great performance you know I thought it was probably one of our Best performances of the season. There was just a, a few areas where, where if, you know, things could have been slightly different. You know, we'd, we'd perhaps won. You know, if we'd have, if we'd have been better, perhaps under the high kick in the corners. You know, I think I, th- I think we definitely could have yeah. won that game. I thought we had a real chance. Um, yeah, disappointed we didn't win it in the end because I just thought we put in a great performance. Uh, I totally agree. I think those um, kicks we need to handle those better, and I think that's what we'll be focusing on. Obviously, with the twins, um, I think they're going to be put under a lot of pressure. And they were at the back end of last season as well. Everyone sees them. That's what happens when a young kid comes in. You think, right? Well, how can we put this player under pressure? The young, inexperienced, they will feel that pressure. So you make sure they know about it. So they'll be thinking, we'll just put kicks above their heads. And that's exactly what's happened. Um, we need to deal with it and give them a bit more support and give them some help. I think it was a couple of lucky kicks where you know they got away with it yeah. and uh, went on to win the game. The other bit I'd like to tidy up is some of the passing that we've been doing. If we're still making a couple too many errors, Darnell, uh, for all the good things he does, he does have a couple of um, issues at times with uh, little passes into touch, and I think he's preempting a couple of those. And um, his strength is running the ball. Sometimes I like to see him run a little bit more to the line, take it on, and build confidence because. He has been exceptional for this for us this season. Such a standout player, one of our um, best players. But for the last two weeks, he, he's found it tough. But that's the game. You do find it tough. We still do enough to win the games. Um, I think they'll be disappointed, but I think they'll grow in confidence off the back of it. And a lot of people say, actually, about Darnell moving him to the wing. Worst mistake you can make. Yeah. Darnell's wasted there. Yeah. <laughs> Keep him at full back. Let him go through this tough period. We've all been through them. He'll come through the other side of it as a better player. Gaskell needs to be in the house. He can carry on there. What a difference he makes, doesn't he? You know, I, I think we're a different team with Gaskell in the house. 
I think you know he was outstanding again on on Sunday. You know, and yeah, I think we can take a lot of confidence from that game and going into the game Friday night against Old Kingston Rovers. Yeah, I think it was Gaskell's. My one message to be to him would be. Don't get injured, mate. We're really, yeah. we're really, really Stay need fit. you at the moment. Uh, Leroy will be back soon and also Fergie. That'll really strengthen yeah. us up as well. Yeah. So I'm excited about the players that are coming back and uh, the performance they're putting at the Two weekend. Two big names you mentioned there to come back for us. You know, I think I think they'll be big performers when we get back yeah. out on the field. I think the thing about um, when hearing everyone talk about Gaskell, I think the thing about Gaskell that I'm always most impressed with is um, is his demeanour and his uh, and he never looks flustered when he's on the ball and and he takes it off the field as well. He's never flustered. Mm. Um, I think there's a calmness that he brings to the team and and the ability to sort of take a little bit of the pressure off Frawley, you know, um, in the halves. They're, they're very much sort of a fifty fifty unit. They, they, both of them add something to the to the partnership, and when one's gone. I think even even as talented as Ollie Russell is, it does disrupt the, the flow a little bit, yeah. and I think it disrupts the mentality of the team a little bit as well. Because as I say, Gaskell's so calm, and he's able to sort of lead the team around the field. We we, we looked like we never lost our heads at any point during yeah. that game. I mean, the comments that I was going to say about the um, about the, about the game on Sunday was. I was really pleased. I was so disappointed that we lost the game, <laughs> because you know, I, I mean, you you go into the match and you're hearing people talk about it, and they're talking about, well, you know, this is going to be a tough day. That people, I, I spoke to a lot of the journalists before the game, and they were expecting they were expecting a, a walkover, yeah. and to come at the end of the game and know that we were so close is massively disappointing, you know, but. I'd rather be disappointed that we were so close yeah. than um, have you know the predictions of the, of the of the press and a lot of the people who are coming into the game where we where it would have just rolled over. It's, it, you take a lot more out of it with that. I mean, what? speaking about the LKR game as well, don't forget we've got Michael Lawrence back this week. Yeah. Mm. Dale Ferguson should be in contention. Sebastien, he can he 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 for will be definitely <laughs> be in contention. I would imagine. So we're looking for Simon now. He's got some. Options. So, yeah, options and selection, you know, which is, he's, unfortunately for him and the coaching staff, they haven't had, we've been to the minimum, the bare bones. Yeah. So we're getting bodies back now. So it's going to be interesting. I mean, it's it's a game that I know we can win. Yeah. I know we can beat OKR. Yeah. I know we can. So... We've had to rely on young kids, haven't we, to we bring us through these. And um, one that we're speaking about before, Oliver Wilson as well, yeah. is uh, another young lad that we, we've got in and uh, who's performing very well, I believe, until you might be able to tell us a bit more, playing in the uh, academy team. Um, I've heard he's been doing some really good stuff there, playing at prop. And um, I, I think one of the questions that's been put to us yeah. is, uh, would, he, would he be ready to uh, play in Super League or start again? Um, for me... With where I've come from and been there, it's a big jump. It's a big jump playing that level to playing first team. I hope he gets an opportunity because I think he'll do a good job. He's a big unit. Um, he looks like he's enjoying himself and uh, hopefully he'll get a shot. I don't know if it's the right time yet. Tully, what, what are your thoughts? I, I, I think Ollie Wilson's coming. Um, obviously, he's coming to a new environment, meeting new people. It's like his first day at school, isn't it? You're going to be quiet and you're going to sit in corner. He's a big lad to sit in a corner, though, to be perfectly <laughs> honest. <laughs> But he's um, in the in the three weeks he's been with us. I, I've seen his body shape change already. Yeah. Um, I mean, as soon as he came, I mean, obviously he's got his blonde hair. Matt English went straight out and got a haircut because I think it was told <laughs> that he was obviously look, better looking, Ollie Wilson. <laughs> so Matty's going to got himself smartened up as well a little bit. But I I think with Simon, um, like Earl says, he's young. He's not ready yet. He's raw. But I wouldn't be surprised. If he makes an appearance latterly yeah. in the season, yeah. Oh, did you make your debut as a prop? Uh, no, I maybe I think I played a bit of centre mm. second row. Played at London, mm. but I was eighteen years old. Yeah, he brought me off the bench, and I remember it like it was yesterday. Well, I remember the first five minutes I played because I got knocked out after that. But <laughs> it was <laughs> it was um, an introduction where I thrown it at the deep end, and I did, hadn't learnt enough um, tools to sort of defend myself, mm. to arm myself with going into a game like that. It was almost too early for me, but yeah. it, it was my first introduction. Deep end, I got hurt. But I, I was that pure all day. I couldn't care less. Yeah, I was just wondering if it, you know, is it harder to make your your debut 
you know, as a Super League prop than it than it perhaps will be to make your debut as a back. I suppose you know it's it's, it's a baptism of fire both ways, really. Yeah, but yeah. at that age, is it is it more difficult, you know, starting as a prop? Hundred percent. I, I think the game's changed though, a little bit. Um, the the game's not sort of based on being bullied, um, mm. which it used to be. Yeah. So if I imagine going out against that Bradford team in two thousand and three when I was just about yeah. twenty one years old. The awesome force. Uh, awesome. Yeah, and then Jimmy Lowe's is there, yeah. like actually pointing at me, saying he's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> and then next to him is Joe Wagner and Paul Anderson, Stuart Field on Jim Mike Forshaw. And you're like, oh, my, I believe him. <laughs> he really is going to come I had to go out yeah. against those packs. He used to absolutely destroy me, beat the hell out of me, bully, bully me as much as they could, yeah. forearm me on the floor. And uh, every time I was uh, fairly mentally tough in that sense, I'd just get back up and keep going, knowing I was going to get absolutely battered. Yeah. I don't believe there's any teams like that in, in Super League anymore, in Rugby League anymore. They, I don't think they ever will be. The game's changed so much. I don't think it's as tough a place to make a debut, um, but it's so quick these days. It's so... It, there's so many big hits and tackles and runs that you have to make. It's all about fitness and power. It's a tough place to walk out there still. So you may not get quite as hurt as much, but you will be off your feet and feel like you just you don't know where the heck you are. And yeah. that is a horrible place to be. And when yeah. you're just running around in circles, just getting pushed from pillar to post, dragged from here to there, because you don't even know where you are anymore. <laughs> That's why you've got to contend with it. It's more that fitness and speed of the game these days. Yeah. Speaking of Bradford, actually, I may as well move on to the game I want to talk about. It was the uh, the Bradford Leeds game. Uh, when was it on? What the a game! Yeah, what a game! It was brilliant, wasn't it? I, I was actually there on the. What, was it Friday? Or Saturday. 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 I, I was there on the Saturday. I love how you were there, but you I don't know when it, it was. It was. It was <laughs> because when he's getting towards the end of his year at uni now. He's all all the days of England yeah, to one. It's he's just too much in Alcohol camera. and. <laughs> you, don't, you don't remember much at all. Well, we're a family show. We don't talk about <laughs> <laughs> Apart from gin, we talk about it. That's <laughs> But, but yeah, no, it, it, the, to be in there, I, w- I would say, honestly, it was one of the most surreal experiences of, of any sporting event I've ever been to in my life. You had the, it, I don't know, they announced 10,000 there at the end. To me, it felt like there were more than 10,000 people. It looked like there were more than that there. It, and, and then they had like the, uh, the stock car cars mm. going around the outside of the pitch and there's like dancers constantly all over the place. Like the was, old days when they were in yeah. Super League, used to go to some brilliant games back in the day there against Saints and Leeds, and they were massive, massive yeah. events, weren't they? They used to have fairgrounds in the outside yeah. of the ground as well. Yeah. It, it, felt, was, it felt like a carnival. Yeah. It didn't yeah. feel like a game of rugby, which yeah. is going to go on, and then obviously you had the actual game itself. I that. think those carnivals were more coincidence than anything else. <laughs> 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 I don't think they actually invited them in. But yeah, was, was it Bullmania? Was that what it Bullmania, was? Bullmania, yeah. yeah. Every car you know, had a sticker and a flag on it. Nose and stuff yeah. like that. As it walked out, yeah. but for me as well, watching that as sort of like growing up, sort of then, yeah. just getting into rugby league properly, that it was unbelievable. That is what it's all about. And I think that's where they've they've got a bit more uh, luck, uh, as in the they've got more opportunity to do stuff like that because we physically can't. As <laughs> we are very well restricted here in uh, the limits of what we can do simply yeah. because yeah, yeah. It, it's not owned by us, and that's yeah. what makes such a big difference to our game. And I don't think people realise the restrictions that we have. Even like this, you know, security staff have got nothing to do with us. Yeah. And the catering staff, nothing. Again, nothing to do with us. We yeah. we don't have a choice in what sort of goes on here. We only have a little say. So when people um, are upset that there's nothing going on around the stadium, it's because we're not allowed to. And when these teams not playing on the pitch before the game, we're not allowed to. The lads are not even allowed to train on there. The only reason they're training on there the last two couple of weeks. It's because the grass is getting ripped up next week because yeah. it's the end of the football season. Just on that point, we will have a few mini games this week. Obviously, oh. the football <coughs> season's finished, yeah. so we do get a small window of opportunity to saw. There will be um, so, some uh, some some of uh, some of the young kids from local amateur clubs playing at half time. So make sure you get down to right. to support the local amateur teams. But yeah, you're right. Yeah. We want to do that, don't we? Mm. We would love to do yeah. all these things every single game, but it's just down to limited opportunity. Yeah. But let's not take away anything from Bradford and what yeah. they've done because they were it? unbelievable Brilliant. in that game. That's Brilliant. the Brilliant. most enjoyable game I've watched in a long time. Yeah. It wasn't by no means perfect, no. but the way it was played out, I think Leeds totally disrespected them, what they were doing yeah, with the ball. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've heard of all these different things and almost like a blame culture with David Ferner going uh, after 14 games 
I think you need to have a look at those players. Yeah, we said last away. week, didn't we? We thought, you know, it was a bad move, or at least I think I said that, you know, and I think it should. That yeah, it probably was a bad move. You're not, you're not, you're not going to change the team overnight by sacking a head coach, are you? But again, I'll reiterate what I also what a fantastic performance from Bradford, and uh, more importantly, what a great, great spectacle of rugby league to be on prime time television yeah, yeah. on BBC, you know, to to show everybody what our game's about. Build up, mm-hmm. yeah. it was loads, it, yeah, yeah. the history, uh, where it came yeah. from, nostalgia, it was. Uh, it built it up very nicely. And I want to yeah. uh, mention one player, Jordan Lilly, who was, uh, he, he was motivated for that game. Yeah. It's amazing what motivation can do for you as a player because he was released by Leeds to go to Bradford, yeah. um, told, told basically it wasn't good enough. And I, I've never seen a player stand up quite as much as what he did yeah. um, he was geeing up the crowd getting them going he was shouting at the players alongside him he was taking on the line and um, he led by example he was a leader which is something Leeds literally don't have but they? also it, it, very noble at the end when asked yeah, about the situation yeah. you know he said look I wish Leeds all the best the big place in my heart so good on the kid for for being you know but also, being gracious uh, about that situation also as well as you know as well as I do Earl Bradford is a very, very intimidating ground to go, yeah. and especially when it's rocking, as it is. You, you won't be aware, as you come in, you drive down, and you come down into this big oval dome. <clears throat> you park at the right-hand side, and you go in through it, and it's literally like, and Earl will back me up with this, Hitler's bunker. <laughs> it's the only way I can describe it. It's in the depths of the stand. It's covered in concrete. You know, a Scud missile won't be able to get through there. <laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, and you get in there, and it's one big long walkway, Earl, and then oh. you come, and they open those massive gates to come out. And what you don't realise is, as soon as you come out, the fans are actually hanging over, yeah, yeah. looking at you, shouting. Um, you know, it, it's intimidating. It really is. You make it sound like a gladiator arena, <laughs> like the Coliseum. Well, they do. That's what it's like. Right? It's it is. It's Release the lion's touch. Yeah. It is, honestly. And you come out and, um, you know, and the, you get this cacophony of noise when you come out there and it just it drowns you. And it, it is an intimidating place to go. I mean, I just run straight to dug out and get sat in corn and cover myself with a bag, you know, because uh, <laughs> it's, the, it's the best place to be. But it, uh, but it is an intimidating place to go, and it's nice to see Bradford back, yeah, yeah, in yeah. the limelight yeah. again. Yeah. You know, too big a club and too yeah. many fans for them not to be in the top level of rugby league, in my opinion. And what an opportunity for them now! They got they got Halifax in the next round. So it's going to be a big game, that championship. Team Another the derby for them, really. Yeah. Another yeah. derby. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, will, will Halifax come out on top in this mm. one? Will they have the same amount of passion that Bradford had against Leeds to do a job on them? Who yeah, knows? Yeah, exactly. I mean, speaking about Jordan Lilly as well, I think a lot of people seem to be forgetting that he think he he won them the game in the previous round against Featherstone, was it? Um, with with the winning drop goal. He, he seems to be on a personal vendetta to get to get all to get all the way to get all the way to the final. You know? Cup Jordan. Yeah, it, it, and and then you 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 input um, John Keir into that as well. Yeah, a man a man who who knows all about getting far in the Challenge Cup. Yeah, I don't think anyone's saying that they're anywhere near the favourites to win it, but they're def- they're definitely involved in the conversation. They've got all the makings thing. of the magic of the cup to be yeah. able to do it, haven't mm-hmm. they? You know, mm-hmm. they've got John Keir, like you mm-hmm. said, well, Sheffield all over. Jo- yeah. Yeah. Sheffield there, didn't yeah. Yeah. they? He took them there, took and there as well. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's an exciting times though. It's like the Challenge Cup is finally back because mm. that is the biggest, in my opinion, the biggest competition. Yeah. Mm. Super League's got nothing on that for no. me, and that's what we've lost in previous years. Mm. But just there's a bit of excitement about and it. And people I, I in Australia that. who still get up during the night to watch the Challenge Cup games when they're on BBC, you know. And well, do they do that with Super League? I'd, I'd, I'd argue they probably don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On a Thursday night. No, I, I, I think not. I think what um, I think one of the um, one of the un- unintended consequences of the qualifiers as well, having uh, championship teams playing against Super League teams on a, on a nearly regular basis has given them the thought, and it's, it's translated into the Challenge Cup that they think they can go to a Super League round and play a Super League team and beat them. Yeah. I mean, we I mean we saw it a couple of times last year in the qualifiers. We um, we've seen it in the past. I mean, I mean Swinton came down. We mentioned it last week. Uh, we, we'll try I told you to not to mention yeah. Swinton. Uh, yeah. we'll, Why we'll did you have to, to mention <laughs> the S words? <laughs> 
We'll try not to mention it every week, but uh, but but championship clubs are coming uh, are able to come to Super League teams and beat them, and um, that's something that's not always been the case. Yeah. So it is quite an exciting time in the Challenge Cup at the minute. And uh, one other thing, actually, flipping uh, the view on it is um, with the Leeds themselves. We mentioned David Fern has gone now. You you'd know yourself, Andy. It's what what's it like in a team when you have that change of manager and you come in for. You come into the dressing room. How's it? How does the dynamics change? It, it it's different because everybody's got their own um, slant on how they want to do it, and you've got to remember as well when they're coming in mid through the seat. I mean, like Simon inherited uh, Rick Stone's squad. Yeah. Uh, Rick Stone inherited Paul Anderson's squad. Mm. You know, it, it's you know you've got to have a bit of longevity mm. to to get the personnel that you want. Because you're always going to be stuck with people that are on a couple of year contracts. That, and it, we're not like a football club, but we, we can't buy and sell. It just doesn't happen in rugby league, as you know, does it? It's, And you've got to keep these people on board and keep them all happy. But, you know, you see them come and you see them go. And it's uh, and it's not nice because you, you, you get to know these people. And they are good people. And, Who's your um, favourite then? Um, <laughs> it's a bit like it's a bit like I've got two children at home and I can't I love them both dearly I love them both dearly but they've all got the different quirks they've all got the different quirks <laughs> I thought you were going to tell us your favourite still then but I do have a favourite <laughs> yeah um, 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 I don't know I mean I, well I, Paul Anderson's got a, and has got a special place in in um, in my life anyway so I'm, you know I've got a lot of time for Paul um, and the most organised man I've ever met in my life um, just knew everything there was nothing he tried to account for every single detail and I think sometimes it tripped him up more concentrating on how we should be doing this and whereas Paul probably speaking to players wasn't really his forte as much He's a great manager. A great manager. In, he can manage the team, and he, that's what, in my eyes, what he should do. Um, as a coach, he's still a great coach. I don't want to take anything away from him like that. But he probably wasn't the most gifted at talking to people as other coaches are. So he's, he never inspired me as a, a, a motivational speaker. But as you say, he was so well organised. I've never seen anyone quite like him. Um, and you know, you do look at coaches for these different sort of things, but the the main reason for a coach to get sacked, uh, to get rid of them, is because you're not playing well. But off the back of that, history states basically after normally you get a reaction, a positive reaction, mm -hmm. and it always happens. Now Leeds, they got a reaction, and just not in yeah. the way anybody the expected, yeah. and they were worse than I've ever seen them. Uh, everyone's got their own agendas um, as players as well and it's a fresh start for any player because they get an opportunity and it looks like nobody was even bothered about that so opportunity. So what's that, that tell you? It wasn't, wasn't the coach's fault, it, was it? Well, it's, I, I suppose the coach has got something to play in that simply because if these things going on and they've accepted it and allowed it to happen, which has got them into this hole, then they are to blame as well. But I'd, I'd have a look at the players as well because I'd expect a, a, a more positive reaction um, even just to show a bit of respect by getting out there, ripping in for the coach that's left, it doesn't look like they got that. And um, I'm not sure where they go from there, to be honest. Mm. I think as well, Earl, whoever's going to come in there is going to have a tough job anyway because they've got players that have got long contracts that are going to be there. So to move people out, to bring people in, it doesn't happen overnight and you can't do it. No. It's not a magic bullet. You can't just bring somebody in no. and think that's going to fix this problem. It doesn't. It's across the team. And what one uh, Leeds player I want to talk about, moving on to sort of the general topic I want to go on to <laughs> next, which is, you know, quickly before we end up here for two hours, um, is uh, Jamie Jones Buchanan uh, on the topic of his mental health awareness week. And he's announced that he's going to be retiring at the end of this season after 20 years of playing, which is a phenomenal amount of time to be playing uh, as a player. And one of the quotes that I read... It, it, about him was um, saying many players struggle for something to do once they retire. Jamie, you imagine, might be sport for choice, but as you know, that might not necessarily be the case once you come out of that. 
Uh, yeah, it's um, it, it's it's a tough transition actually to go from playing straight into uh, working life. Yeah, and um, he's starting right down at rock bottom. Jimmy Jones Buchanan is a little bit of an exception to the rule, yeah. but he's still got to do something that he enjoys, find his yeah. path and the way he wants to go. Like myself, he's worked in the media for a number of years. Mm and you quickly realise, and he'll realise this as well, I don't even need to tell him about it, there's no money in media, no. uh, there's no money in rugby league, not like that, you, you don't get a contract, you're freelance, you'll get a phone call asking you to do a little bit of work yeah, at the yeah, weekends. Yeah. It's nice because it gives you a little bit of walking around money, you can maybe treat yourself now and again and things like that. It's your more long-term um, jobs and uh, looking for longevity in what you do which is mm. the issue and it's something I've managed to find pretty you know pretty quickly Jimmy Jones Buchanan like myself has always done little bits on the side yeah. he will be well prepared for this but it doesn't mean it's that simple Gaz Ellis for instance yeah. he's managed to find himself a decent job at Hull he's been looked after mm. he's back playing again and I don't believe that's simply because he uh, he's just trying to help the team out and he'll do anything to help that side out it's because he wants to be there he hasn't given it up yet and he's not giving it up in his head anyway that's it mm. and it, it must be really difficult for him because I think he's probably transitioning it's finding it harder than what I found it mm. I couldn't be any happier I love doing what I'm doing now I don't miss the game as in missing playing and of course I'm looking forward to the future yeah. and um, that I think you have to sort of embrace that and as soon as you do and you accept it you can move on. Jamie Jones has played for such a long yeah. time. He'll be well prepared. I wish him all the best because I know he's going to be flying. But I hope it's within rugby league because yeah. he'd be fantastic for this game. Yeah. You know, he needs to stay in it. And, and you, you would you would expect it to be in rugby league as well. Though. You would expect him to stay in the sport because I mean I know, I know he does a lot of work with rugby AM and uh, he went out and travelled with the Knights last uh, um, over the winter. And I and um, I wasn't directly involved with him, but I was I was working I was I was working around England rugby league at the time, and um, he's he's very well respected over there. Yeah. So you would you would say that you would say that he he would be as you said spoiled for choice. I I, yeah. I think he is a little bit of an exception because he's 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 almost started his media career about five years yeah. before he's retired. <laughs> he's 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 got himself he's got his feet under the table. I, I I'd, I'd say I'd say he'd be well set. But as like a, I want to go back to being like a, a current player, you you and uh, what you and Jamie have in common is that you stayed at one club for your entire career. And one thing that I hadn't considered until thinking about it recently was, you have the like you said the, the mental issues of moving to a new club and adapting to surroundings. But what's it like for the players who are left behind when you're there for twenty years? You've played with so many full different squads. Surely you know it's to lose have get friends and lose friends. And what's that like? For you? It, and you might be able to answer that as well, Andy, if you've seen players it, come and leave. It's quite funny, actually, because you, you play, I must have played alongside, I, don't, I, I can't even tell you, like hundreds, <laughs> I guess, players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I'll be honest with you, there's not many that I um, stay in touch with. There's only a few, because I, I still like anybody else. I've had the same mates from growing up on the right, estate yeah. in Melton, where I lived. <laughs> still mates with them to this day. And that's who I normally hang around with. But I do have a lot of uh, friends out of rugby league, tons of them. Always see them, you know, I'll have a drink with them, um, still give them a hug and stuff like that because it's just nature of the beast. You get used to meeting people, and that's what Mad Monday is all about at the end of the season. And yeah, everyone yeah. thinks it's just a glorified, um, drunken night yeah. out. It, it is in a sense, but it's goodbye. Yeah, that's what it is. Mm. It's it's to say thank you to the players that you played alongside, put your bodies on the line. It's the final goodbye. Yeah. And that's why it's so important to what we do. People yeah. think it's just... Uh, and I've heard about it in the press saying that it shouldn't be allowed to do Mad Monday and things like that. They don't understand it. They don't yeah. understand what it means to the players because it's that final hoorah, yeah. um, say goodbye to these players, especially the ones that are from further afield. Yeah, yeah. And it means a lot to what they've done for the club and for each player as well. So it's massively important to, to our game, uh, those things. But they do come, they do go. You'll yeah. always respect each other and always be friendly. But the, it doesn't mean that the sort of your close friends for life, um, you're just sort of part of a massive yeah. family, yeah, which yeah. you never forget. How is it for you too? Because you know, sort of as a player, you've got a mate mate relationship. But like you said earlier, you've probably got more of a paternal relationship with some of these players, and you know, I'm sure that you're happy to see the back of them. But you know, be really, <laughs> must be really difficult to see some of them go because you looked after them on a day to day basis. Oh, it is. I mean, you know. It, Sometimes you, 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 your weeks can change about <clears throat> you, certain people. Oh, yeah, I love them. Well, as I said before, I thought they were best friends. The following week it can be, oh, you mean the enemy. <laughs> you know, that's just how it can go. You know, how, how it flips. But 
and it's sad to see people go but Earl, Earl's right that we, we talk about a lot about the rugby league family but the togetherness and the closeness what you're bonding together it, it, it's massive and it means so much and like Earl's nailed it there saying it's it's your last goodbye to some certain people it's not about the you know the fancy dress idea of it or wherever they go it's about all being together and having that bond and we can talk about things that have gone in season and laugh about things that's gone in season and that's what it's all like it's special it's 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 uh, it's, it's hard to put your finger on it unless you've been in that select group shall i say you know but it is a it is a it is a special time and it means a lot to people how do injuries affect players if you've seen behind and you know yourself it's how does that you know because it, it must be upsetting if you're in especially in the middle of a game and you get an injury and you know you've done some damage there and you go you go into the stadium and then that's it people don't see you they just hear the news after that what's it like for a player to go through that well it's, it's tough camera for them because you, you don't know immediately what is the problem yeah i mean we've had people come off and they oh he's, they've done his acl or he's he, Syndesmosis is a is a uh, is a new favourite one, um, but they don't know, and it's not until a couple of days later when they've been for a scan that you find out the extent of it. Some are bad, mm. you know. Some are maybe. I mean, I've been told we won't see him for three weeks. Following week, he's back playing. Yeah, you know, you just see that. But it's you also gotta, heard that uh, we'll see him next week, and it's been twelve weeks. Uh, well, well, we've got yeah, yeah. There, there is that one as well. Yeah, unfortunately, but you've got um, you've got to try and keep positive, and you know, and around the group it, it it can it can alienate certain people when they're not in i i know for a fact they all love being together training up field yeah and when you've got a section that a gym stuck in the gym yeah, yeah and that can't get out on the field with the boys they feel like they're missing out mm-hmm. and you've got to keep the spirits up yeah, yeah um and that's that's sort of one of the little beauties of me i mean obviously as i say i'm, I'm a lot older than them so I can regurgitate old jokes that they've never heard, <laughs> and they think I'm the funniest man in the world. Um, You've got to remember these play- players, some of them, when they've had these bad injuries, they're just isolated on their own, especially beginning of the season. You go into the first game and yeah. I don't, you, you, you do something really bad, you're out for 10 weeks, you might be the only player in rehab. Yeah, so yeah. you go into the gym every day and you might see people a little bit and then they all go off and it's like see you later and then you'll spend three hours in the gym on your own how do you cope with that um, that? that that's the problem that's the issue yeah. some players really really struggle with it mm. and uh, they find it very dark and they don't know if they're going to get back and they do yeah. go through depression they, yeah. there's no doubt about it because mm. they're worried about everything because if you're out for a certain amount of time as well the club actually can release you yeah. and um there's all sorts of these worries that go through. Yeah, you're gonna go back into the team. Yeah. Are you gonna go on loan? Are you even gonna be fit enough to play again? Yeah. And you worry about all these things. But the good thing is, is someone else gets injured and they join you and you're in your own little group together and it's like there's a couple of you, but then people go and leave you behind again. And it's tough. I mean, I was yeah. very lucky, I didn't have any major injuries. Um very lucky in fact and um, even when I finished I, I could have carried on so yeah. I was so very lucky in that sense but I did have a lot of little injuries I was only in rehab for maybe three or four weeks at a time I was always surrounded by lads yeah. uh, made it very easy for me but I did see people that were in there for a long time and they, they had some real dark times and I felt yeah. for them it's, it's not nice and to keep on the course of mental health your story Andy of getting here in the first place is quite one I've uh, been told it's a uh, interesting to say the least well it, yeah it, yeah I mean with it obviously be, with it being mental health awareness week um, you know I'm happy to talk about it and uh, how I came to be down here basically um, I'd, I'd sort of split up with me uh, with my wife uh, and I was living on my own um, I didn't see a great deal of my kids um, but my days just consisted of basically getting up, getting something to eat, uh, waiting for the pub to open, going to the pub, coming home, going to sleep. Yeah. Carried on, carried on, carried on. Um, and I sort of knew at the time, it were it were like I'd swum away from an island, and this pe- they were telling me to come back to this island, but the further and further I got away from it, in a way. Found a little bit of comfort in the darkness. Yeah. Well, and and probably in the alcohol as well. And I remember going to bed one day. Well, I can't even remember. I couldn't even tell you what day it was. And it was 
I didn't get out of bed for five days. And I didn't know it were five days. I, I didn't know. My phone was flat. I just didn't know. Mm. And I couldn't even get out of bed to go to the toilet. I hadn't wet myself, by the way, because <laughs> I just didn't eat or anything. It's hard to believe that after five days, man, to be honest with you. <laughs> no, it, it is a fact. It is a fact. Um, and I just got up one day and just thought, this is what, where am I going? This is not me. Yeah. So I got up, had a shower, had a shave. I came down to see uh, Richard Thewlis, our CEO. And I just said, look, there's got to be something I can do. Anything. I'll do anything. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately at the time, Barry uh, Wilkinson, who was the kitman at the time, he'd had a, a little a medical issue where he, um, he, he wasn't allowed to drive. So he said, uh, well, you can drive van if you want to training and back. And, and I knew uh, Baloo and I knew Kieran and uh, other members of staff down here. And so I sort of knew everybody. And they were more than happy to say, yeah, you can, you can come in. You know, that, and that showed a massive amount of trust what they put in me. Yeah. Um, so I came down and, and that's what I was doing. I was basically driving the van and then it will, well, can you drive the van to the, to the games? Yeah, I can do that. And then all of a sudden, I'd got a purpose. I'd, I'd got yeah. a meaning and I'd got a reason to get out of bed. Um, you know, I didn't need to feel I needed to go to pub to speak to people because all of a sudden, I'd got this massive influx of new friends. Mm. And um, But I did struggle, you know, it, 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 it was tough. And I, I mean, say about depression, I probably did have it, but I didn't know I had it. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. And... Um, Getting out of it and getting what I've done. I mean, you, 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 you know, as I said, Paul Anson's got a special place in my heart. Cause he, but I can honestly say, <clears throat> the Uddersfield Giants, and it's not being dramatic, saved my life. <laughs> the, that's what it did. It saved my life. And the rugby league family, wonderful. Yeah. You know, that, and that's... And I would urge anybody that's got... You know, loneliness is a horrible thing as well, and, and that's what I felt like. Yeah. And then to come down and meet everybody... And be accepted as well is a is a is a great thing. Yeah. And it's happiness and well being is massive. And people need to talk about their issues, that's what they need to do. Yeah. And not bottle them up. And there's no answers in pubs. <laughs> Trust me. Trust me. It's an unbelievable story that Till and the thing that fascinates me about you is if anyone ever spoke to you, they'd never know you'd ever been through anything like that. No, that, you're the happiest that, go you know, happy go lucky fella. You'd ever meet in your life. Always got a joke, and you yeah. will just never know. That and that's what's scary there. about it, yeah. isn't it? Because yeah. it's it's that skin deep is that side yeah. of it. But then underneath that is the the true, true story. So yeah. um, um, obviously I, we know everyone loves you a bit, Tully, and all the players do especially. You do such a fantastic job for everyone and at the club, and uh, hopefully um, you don't stop driving and do what Barry the Blade did and got a badge. Who's uh, probably got some more stories of himself? In fact, <laughs> oh. you've got a story. You must have a story about Barry oh, the Blade. I think we've all got a story yeah, about Barry to, the Blade. Um, I used to, I used to see people uh, every day, and they'd uh, on a tea time we're out walking my dog, and they'd always ask, "Have you got a Barry story today?" <laughs> I had a story every day with Barry. Every day, um, <clears throat> very much a, a character, Barry. Uh, a lovely, lovely man as well, but just. Different Barry yeah. is is a phrase. Did he like. end up in the North Sea on his barge? Oh, I'm well, sure this. I'm sure I was on the bus. We saw a paper or something, and he had a picture with um, all his giant skier in when he. I found... think I think the tale goes is that he was he, he was perhaps going down a canal and and took a wrong turn and then ended up getting rescued from sailing out into the Humber estuary. <laughs> well, he did. So. He, he he tried to he tried to cross the ooze well, apparently at high tide. And uh, in Barry's words to me, I said, what were you doing, Barry? He said, well, I tried to crash the barge. He said, but the tide <laughs> took me. Uh, he said, so I said, well, where was next stop? He said, Zeebrugger. <laughs> <laughs> so, but luckily, the uh, the Coast Guard collared him. Air Sea Rescue and everything were out there. And uh, great publicity for us because he was adorned with a giant's hat, giant's flag, giant's <laughs> jacket on. <laughs> Um, miss, really. And Apple, he happily sent us. I think it was the Grimsby Gazette sent us the front page. He made the front news, the uh, front page in Barry. Um, well, uh, his, uh, his, his navigation in a van is also legendary. If you remember as well, our, our ex media man James Renard uh, 
we were we were playing against the Catalans and James Renard and Barry were driving the van down to to the south of France obviously and uh, James was having a, a quick nap in the back and got woken up by a text message from his phone which said this is from Vodafone welcome to Switzerland <laughs> so <laughs> quickly said to Baz where are we Baz and uh, yeah I think they, they, they t- took a detour you know perhaps a, a, a six hour detour back to France from Switzerland <laughs> I won't uh, I want, we went we went to London once when we played when London played at the uh, the Stoop the Harlequins, and uh, I just said to Barry, I said, "Oh, Barry, you bring a lot of things." We, oh yeah, yeah, you do. You need them. You need them. I said, "Have you ever forgotten anything, Barry?" I left. No, never, lad. Never, never, never. I kid you not. On the door, the London kit man. Oh, it's nice to see you boys back here. You left these two courts last time you were here, Barry. <laughs> Oh, that, I don't think that I was. I said, no, Baz, that I was. It says giants all over them. You know, it was just one of, the, one of them. Well, you say you never left anything either, but, you know, I remember being on the on the, on the the team bus to to uh, Hull one day. I think it was to Hull KR, and um, I was sat next to Brownie, and uh, Brownie just turns his neck, and he's looking down the other side of the 62, and our kit band's going back down the other side of the 62. <laughs> so... Uh, to, so it's a few phone calls, mate, and I think uh, I think there's been a shirt left. But what an absolute gentleman of a bloke would do anything for you, Barry. Great fella, absolutely. Great <laughs> I remember fella. him with, uh, with, with with Paul Anderson. Uh, there were one particular game. Uh, I can't remember who it was, who, uh, home or away. And Paul came into the dressing room and looked round at the team that was hung up and just said, "Where's so and so? Where's I think we're Robbo. Where's where, where's Robinson? And where's I can't remember other. There were about three anyway." And Barry went, well, you, you, why did you... And he went, you, well, they're playing. They're playing, Baz. It, it must have been at home. And Barry turned around to Paul, looked him straight in the face and said, why are you going that way, are you? <laughs> 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 um, which, uh, obviously, I, you know, I, I sniggered a little bit to keep out of the way, you know. So I said, it's all right, I'll go get everything. And then um, I also remember Paul saying to me, uh, listen, you, your remit for next week is keep him as far away from me as possible. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tully, you've seen three coaches out. Earl, how many kit man have you? Did you see out here? Um, I, I don't know, actually. Quite a few of them, yeah. It's, uh, a few interim. Yeah, uh, interim. Yeah. Yeah, Tully's probably... There was Frank, first of all, and uh, another yeah. um, legend, Mark Weevil, as well. Yeah, I totally know him well. And uh, Mark Weevil was absolutely fantastic for us. Great bloke, and... Uh, he uh, basically had two prosthetic legs, uh, which made him kind of extra special because um, although he was battling, having his own battles, whether they were sort of not so much mentally but more physically, and he was having to be a kit man. But the amount of times, and it, in the end, he felt so sorry for him. I mean, at the beginning, he felt so sorry for him because um, he'd be walking through the changing rooms, he'd be a wet floor, and he'd go absolutely flying on his backside. Everyone's rushing over, twelping up and everything. But by the end of it, you were laughing because he just kept doing it over and over again. It was just part of what he did. It was just, oh, here we go again. Because he didn't care. He was just to yeah. bounce back up, do anything for everyone. Um, and if but, he can do that in the changing rooms, yeah. then that showed an example to what the lads can do on the field. Exactly. He was inspiring, and that was the difference. Although he probably got a little bit carried away, a little bit like um, Barry did when, when they start questioning the uh, coaching staff they start having an opinion about how they should play which is kind of amusing Tully luckily hasn't learnt that bit he's got his opinions on other things I well, think but. I, I, I sort of see it's like you, you know going back to like you say what, what's the dressing room like when you've lost um, it's, it, it's never a nice place to be um, and, and shouting at people it doesn't you don't always get a response to be fair with Simon he speaks very well and he asks for input and the only input I can sort of say, what I see is, I believe in them boys, so when the game's finished, I'll pick the dirty underwear up, I'll pick the mucky socks up, I'll pick all the kit up, yeah. I'll put it in my shopping trolley, and I'll wash it, and I'll clean it, and I'll make sure they look immaculate the next time, because I believe, that's I believe in them, and mm-hmm. I believe in this club, and we can do things. That's what it's about to me. I feel like I need to give you a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll put one in over the top. We'll yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, mo- moving on uh, to my last point on here, it's uh, the match preview of the Huddersfield Hull KR game uh, on Friday. Uh, they've lost last four in a row in the Super League. They did get a result against Salford, but last time out we, well, I would say battered forty-two eight here. So it's a and it is a pretty big game. 
looking at the table and how things are going. It's what are our thoughts on that? Um, I think I think that forty two eight result is a little bit skewed. I must admit. Right. Because when um, when when they came down here, they were, I mean we we've been light all year, but they were very very light. Yeah. Um, they we 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 bullied them. Mm. Um, I I don't I wouldn't use that as a yardstick for this week. Yeah. Um, I think um, they are a much better side when they when they're all together when they have a bit more power in it. Tim yeah. Sheens is an excellent coach, and I think I think despite people looking at the last result and thinking we should probably be getting something, it's going to be a really tough game against us. Against Till KR. Yeah. Um, also, they, they should have Danny Maguire back as well, which um, I, I think makes such a difference in a leadership capacity. I mean, we were talking about Gaskell earlier on. Um, Maguire does that for the Maguire's demeanour does that for Till KR as well. But if you if you're looking at the uh, if you're looking at the um, the rest of the the, the the context of the game in the season, yeah. I think um, I think this is a really big one. Mm. Must win game for us, I feel. Got to get two points. This must be one that the coaches staff are looking at and going, this is two points we can take away here, fellas. Well, I think as well that if we win this game, it puts a little bit of distance between the bottom clubs yeah. and it puts us still within reaching distance the of the playoffs. Yeah. So it is pivotal that we win this game. And I'm 100% sure we will win it. Is that still everyone's aim in the, inside the changing room then? Is of course it is, and until it's mathematically impossible for us to get... Well, there's a lot of points to play for still, yeah. Cameron, a yeah, lot yeah. of games to go, and we're getting people back, we're getting personnel back, yeah. key personnel as well. We can kick on, we just... But when you're down there, sometimes it's tough as Earl, Earl and Earl, you yeah. just don't get the rub of the, uh, the, yeah. rub of the green. But Trust me, you're trying hard, it's just everything you do goes wrong and doesn't work for you. When you're winning, it's easy. You don't mm. even break sweat, it's yeah. really strange. You yeah. don't feel like you're working as hard. The good thing about the Challenge Cup was we could play without nerves. Yeah. And um, I, I think the issue we've ha- we're having in the league is because we are sort of that in-between stage of fighting for relegation mm. or fighting for the playoffs. We're playing nervously. Yeah. Um, we're playing really tight within ourselves. So we're, not, we're, we're scared of not making mistakes or making mistakes. So we are making ex- more mistakes than normal because you're trying to tighten the play up. When you can play just for that one win, it's not about two points. You can open up a little bit, start enjoying yourself. And uh, you know that you can uh, play a bit better, and I think that's the best we've played simply because there's less pressure on thinking about the league. Yeah. So if we can uh, take that confidence, the way we played into the next game against Hulk here, pick up a win there, mm. we can start believing ourselves to push on yeah. and not worry and not look over our shoulders as much and start looking up the table, which uh, for us would be absolutely fantastic, and I feel that would ease a bit of pressure and make us play better. Yeah. Uh, I said last. I said last week. You know, I said exactly what Earl said. You know, we were going into we were, we went into that game as underdogs, and nobody was giving us a chance. Mm-hmm. Which let us play with no pressure on us, and I think you know we we gave a true representation of what we can do, what the Huddersfield Giants can do as a team. You know, maybe maybe that role's reversed this week. Maybe there's a little bit more pressure on us because we'll probably be expected to win this game. We'll be wanting to get the two points, but. My feeling is is that off the back of that game that we played on Sunday, um, there's a lot of confidence to be taken, and we know that we've got the ability to mix it with the big boys, you know, which hopefully should give us the confidence to be able to do a job on all Kingston Rovers. If we draw a bit of the defence that we had in the games against Castleford and, and last Sunday, I, I think that there won't be many teams that will be able to breach us and score more no. and, and score more points than we can. Mm. Um, yeah, I think, um, and also we tend to. I don't know whether it's a, um, it's something mentally in the players. We we tend to have a turnaround around Magic Weekend as well, when we we have a good record at Magic Weekend, and it tends to, and it has in the last couple of years been something that's, that's that we've yeah. used at the the platform of it to kick on in the season. I mean, we kicked off, um, our it was around about then when we kicked off our twelve wins out of thirteen in, uh, in, in last season, the season yeah. before. It was it was when we. Uh, when we manage to get into the Super 8, so it tends to be a point where we start to sort of move mm-hmm. on in the season and pick up more results. Hopefully that's the case in the next few weeks. Yeah. Uh, anything else anyone's to add? I, I think we can do Twitter and Facebook stuff there next week, probably. <laughs> so don't run over. Mm. Oh, good. Far. Anyone now left listening now? <laughs> Tully, what's your favourite Kitman story? Since you've been a kit man at the Giants. Well, I, I'm I'm probably going to keep them all to myself, to be perfectly honest. Because I'm, I'm actually uh, I'm actually in the process of uh, sort of doing like a memoir, yeah. actually. Yeah. 
Um, so I'm writing certain things down. I've actually got a, a working title for me uh, for me book. What's it called? Uh, it'll be the the memoirs of a kit man. It'll all come out in the wash. <laughs> 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 so I'll uh, I'll keep them there, but. Uh, Certain and stories, obviously, you can't, you can't say. Can't say can't really you, soon to be available in all bad bookstores. Yeah. <laughs> I think Lady Bird are looking to publish it, so uh, there you go. Yeah, so, uh, thanks very much, gents, for that. That's brilliant. Thank you very much, Andy. Thank you very much, Connor. Uh, we'll see. Listen next time. <laughs>